So tonight's uh, course is Steps for Success, a basic literacy curriculum. And it's gonna be re, uh, presented by our very own Rebecca Powers. She's our regional director, uh, regional program director rather for Literacy New Jersey of Burlington and Gloucester County programs. She oversees the coordination of English language and US citizenship classes, one-to-one -one and small group tutoring and conversation groups. Through her program, she provides services to over 130 English language learners and basic skills students a year. And she manages over 40 volunteer tutors. Rebecca began her career as an English language instructor in 2002 in Akron, Ohio, and has also taught English in Drew, I think I said it right, France before she came to a Literacy New Jersey in 2013. So I'm gonna turn it over to Rebecca now. I hope that you all enjoy the presentation. All right, thanks so much, Lauren. I'm gonna share my screen again. Actually, do it this way. Here we go. So hi and welcome everyone. Um, I am looking forward to sharing my basic literacy lesson plans with you. My intention is for this workshop to be as engaging as possible. So take full advantage of the chat box and participate in all of the activities even if you weren't picked as a volunteer today. Um, so if you are joining on a tablet or smartphone, you might not be able to participate in some of the activities if you don't have the app that, um, that I'm using downloaded onto your tablet or smartphone. But don't worry, I will share my screen so that you can watch as we work through these activities. And then at the very least, you can access the links later through your computer. So let's take a moment now, go ahead and add your name and the type of students that you work with in the chat box. I think it's always fun to see who we have in our group tonight. I see Josh is here from RCBC. Hey, Josh. We have Dinah, she's teaching ESL students. Excellent, Fal's here, hi Fal. We also have Sue, who's with High Beginners. Is that High Beginners ESL? Okay, we have some, we have a combination of lots of ESL and some basic literacy. Excellent. Great. From all over tonight, representing all over New Jersey, north to south, all the way to Ocean County. Hey Jane. Alrighty, great. Lots of basic literacy tutors here tonight. Excellent. All right, so to start, give me a moment here. To start, um, we will begin with a question that I like to start each of my basic literacy classes with. And that question is, what have you read this week? I enjoy getting good book recommendations uh, from others. So we're going to start by sharing a book or article that we've read recently. You'll use your, um, we're going to use Jamboard for this activity. I'll place the link in the chat box and you'll click the link and it will take you to this Google application called Jamboard. If you haven't used it before, you'll get a chance to use it tonight. Once you're there, you'll want to use the sticky note feature. And that sticky note feature is found in your toolbar, which will, it looks like this, it'll be on the left hand side of the page. And this is your sticky note icon here. You'll click on that. I have to make me see myself smaller here. And then this window will pop up, okay? This is your sticky note. Type in any book you've read recently, any article, um, just type that in there. Feel free to um, play around with some different colors up here. And then when you're happy with what you've created, click save and that will post to the Jamboard. Any questions on that? Okay, One moment. Here we go. I need to copy this. And then I'm going to paste this in the chat box here. I see Anthony's joined us. Welcome, Anthony. Okay, so go ahead and click that, and I'll meet you guys all in the Jamboard. I'll be sharing my screen there.
Okay, good. It looks like we've got some people already joining. Excellent. Hopefully for those of you who weren't able to click the link that you can see it on my screen here now. Ooh, looks like some good suggestions here. I'm looking forward to heading to my library to see what some of these are. If you can't find yours, you might just um, click on it. You can move these around here. So um, I'm gonna move Barb's here for just a minute. So you can always click on it and move that around. Yep, there you go, awesome. The Alice Network, oh yes. I've heard of that one. And the Midnight Library keeps coming up. Oh, I loved The Girl with Seven Names. I thought that was an excellent book. Alrighty, Blocked from Opportunity. Wow, this sounds great. Rebecca, I'm so, sorry, I didn't know how to add it. I have, I have to click on again. So if you click on that sticky note and then you type in- I, your, and then do, you, do I have to go to Jamboard at the top? So the Jam, I didn't the get Jamboard, Jamboard in the, um, the, you'll click the link in the chat box and it'll take you to the Jamboard that oh, we're all okay. collaborating on. Okay, sorry. Ooh, Hillbilly Elegy. I read that one too. That was really good. Excellent. Wait, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I just joined. It's my fault for being late. Is this the ESL? This what? is Steps for Success. This is the basic literacy workshop. Oh, yes, that's what I want. But these are all like these are all like really great books to read. What does this have to do with teaching our ESL students? Okay, so we're going to get to that. We're just doing a, wow. a little introduction here. Um, the the link to this is in the chat box. I'll post it there again if you joined a little late and didn't see the link. And then you can join and you can add um, any sort of book or article that you've read lately. We've got some great ones on here. I love Dune. I thought that was wonderful. Loved that book. So how did you get these? How did you get this? The, the books and stuff? Yeah, so people are just adding their own books um, that they've read recently. So if you can see my page here, Leslie, um, if, if you click on the Jamboard link, then you'll see this toolbar over here on the left. And then this icon right here is the sticky note icon. If you click on it, a sticky note will pop up and you can type uh, in a book that you've read you. recently. I'm gonna add mine in there. Oh, what color haven't we seen a whole lot of? Okay. And then I'll move mine down here. All right, so hopefully you guys get some good book recommendations here. Excellent. So this will be here and the link will be active throughout um, the conference. So you can always feel free to come back here and check those out. Oh, Anxious People is great. Mm -hmm. We'll highlight that one right here, Anxious People. Is that fiction or nonfiction? Um, it's fiction. Mm, okay. All righty. So I use this question each week with my students. I love to ask them, what are you reading? So my students know that this question is coming every week and they know they're going to have to tell me what they've read. They're gonna to have to give me a short summary of what they read and I accept all answers. I really don't care what they've read. I just want them to be reading every week. So some students come in and they just tell me that they read the cat in the hat to their child and that's totally okay. Whatever you've read, I accept. Um, currently I'm working with a student who loves manga novels. I think I said that right. It might be manga, I apologize. He tells me every week and I cannot remember, but he, if you've heard of manga, I'm gonna just stick with manga. It's this incredible, they're kind of like graphic novels and he gets so passionate telling me about these, these stories, the saga that he's reading through. And my student never read a book before, he never completed a book, I should say, before he came into this program. So to find something that he's interested in and then to have that listening, that, that really empathetic ear to just listen and um, um, hear what they have to say and, and how they're enjoying the book. Um, continues to keep them reading, as well as build some really good reading habits to show people, to show our students that um, reading is pleasurable. And a lot of people find it pleasurable and they enjoy sharing, as you see here, we enjoy sharing our, um, our great finds with other people. So I hope for my students and I, um, that they will create a reading habit and a new hobby by the end of the Steps for Success class. So thank you so much for sharing with me here today. Just a moment. 
pull up my slides again. Okay, so during this workshop, you're going to learn about a curriculum uh, I created called Steps for Success. It's a series of eight lessons designed for basic literacy students, meaning students who read around us, you know, anywhere from a first, second grade reading level up to maybe a fourth or fifth grade reading level. The lessons address the challenges of working with basic literacy students while using techniques learned from tutor training. Um, I work mainly with tutors, uh, volunteer tutors, and what I found is that these tutors, we, we, they don't have a lot of, um, there's not a lot of resources out there for tutors. So I, it gives my, tu my volunteer tutors lessons, ideas, and, and resources to use with their basic literacy students. So if you work with basic literacy students, these challenges will be familiar to you. And these are challenges specific to working with basic literacy learners that don't necessarily apply to English language learners. For example, these students are more likely to drop out of our program after just a few weeks of instruction. Um, they have unique skills and needs that make group in instruction challenging. Um, many do not have established habits or a support system in place for their learning. And, and finally, there are, as I mentioned, fewer resources available to our basic literacy tutors as compared to our English language tutors. So I created this curriculum to address these challenges and to support our tutors and students so that they find success in our programs. So to address these challenges, I've, I've included lesson plans that help students clearly identify their goals, to create a vision for their future, to establish and maintain a reading habit and build confidence through independent learning strategies such as how to complete a library search or how to find a job. The techniques I use to teach the activities mainly come from tutor, tutor training techniques. And these include the language experience approach. If you're unfamiliar with this, or if um, you went through tutor training and it's just not something you use very often, you could do a quick YouTube search for the language experience approach, also called the language experience story for just a quick refresher or to learn the, the steps in this. Um, what a language experience approach is or the language experience story is, it is a, it's an activity that you do with your student um, that uses your student's own words to create a reading and writing piece for them. Um, and what you're essentially doing is you're generating a reading piece for your student at their specific reading level because you're using their own words. We also use reading and writing strategies that are taught during our tutor training and I've also found that students need spelling strategies and an understanding of how to interact with the text so that it's more enjoyable. So the curriculum offers a spelling strategy and it teaches students how to annotate a text, which you know, basically means how to take notes while reading. Um, the lessons also teach students digital skills like internet searches, emailing, navigating websites and apps. Um, this supports their independent learning strategies. So if a student still chooses to leave, a pro the, to leave the program before the class ends or before they reach their goal, they will have learned some skills and strategies to continue learning new things on their own. So now I'd like to take you through a few of the activities from the curriculum. The first is using reading strategies to identify skills our students already possess. So when students first come into the into the program, they feel pretty inadequate. Um, I like using text to point out positive skills and traits that other people have, and then use these to help students identify what skills they have that have brought them this far in life. And I do this because I want my students to begin to shift their mindsets and how they perceive themselves and to show them that they can use these skills to improve their reading as well. Okay, so I'm going to show you, here's some picture, and this is the title of the article up here. So take a look at that and tell me, you can shout it out, you can type it in the chat box, whatever you're comfortable with. What do you think this article will be about?
Maybe that he's a writer with the, the idea of the superpower is that he's a writer because of the pen. Excellent. Okay. Maybe he's a writer. Great. Anything else? Lauren, I can't, uh, for some reason, I don't have access to the chat box right now. So if people are typing in, if you could just shout that out. Um, yeah, I was trying to unmute myself. So we have a writer, um, writing, drawing, writing comic books, author, being an author, superheroes, Excellent. creating a world, Stan Lee's writing, comic book writing. Great, thank you. All great, great ideas about what this article might be about. Um, we see the word superpowers in here. What are some examples of superpowers? Flying. Flying, yes, thank you. I'm sorry, thank, yes, flying, definitely. Making something disappear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super strength. Super strength. Mm. Uh, we have invisibility. Yes. Healing, speed, mm. visuals. All great, all great. Reading minds. Yes. Overcoming <laughs> adversity. Fantastic. Excellent, Rescuing thank you. people. Absolutely. So then if we have a superpower, what would be the opposite of a superpower? Handicap. A handicap, okay. Yep. Weakness. Powerlessness. Yeah. Powerless, rather. Inability to take care of oneself. Kryptonite. Kryptonite, yeah. yeah. Helplessness. All good. Human. I like that one. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. Paralyzed. <laughs> yeah. These are all wonderful, thank you. So what do you think then our basic literacy students kryptonite is? If you work with ESL students, you're welcome to shout out what you what you might perceive it, their kryptonite might be. Their confidence. Confidence, yeah. <clears throat> Embarrassment. I'm sorry, Vonda, can you say that again? Embarrassment. Oh yeah, absolutely. Embarrassment. Their skill levels, they just don't have the skill level that they want or to be, be successful. Absolutely, absolutely. They're reading, right? Is right there, that reading skill level. Past failures. Mm -hmm. So then what, What's their superpower? What's our, what are our students' superpowers? They're highly motivated. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Resilient. Oh, yeah. Life experience. Life experience, resilience, yeah. Perseverance, yeah. desire. Tenacity, Excellent. curiosity. Yeah. Oh, finding wonderful. ways to get around reading. That is my favorite. This is what I love to highlight on my with my students. Like you are so good. You're so good. You've gotten yourself this far in life. You've started a business. You've raised children. How do you do it? How do you do it? Yeah, I like to highlight this. And I like to then show my students that we can use those superpowers to, and, and, to apply them to our reading skills and help them to build their reading skills up. So I'm gonna show you the text. Um, and as you're reading the text, I'd like you to think about what your superpower is and what your kryptonite is. So, and when you figure that out, please write that down. Um, you're not gonna see the whole text. Um, we don't have time for the whole text and I don't have a lot of space on my slide for the whole text, but don't worry. Even though it is not complete, you'll have access to the article afterwards if you're interested in reading the rest of it. Um, remember, as you read, again, to write down your superpower and your kryptonite. I'll give you a few minutes to, to read through this. So my timer here.
there's my timer. So don't worry if you didn't finish the article, hopefully you've had a chance to write down what your superpower and your kryptonite is. I'm not gonna ask you, there's no quiz on this. I'm not gonna ask you any questions about the article. I just wanted to, I use these to help my students, as I said, just to generate some ideas for them. What could be your superpower? What, what could be your kryptonite? I do this activity with anywhere from two to five students, and, and I strongly encourage my students to, to share their answers with their classmates, and that's really hard. Right? That, that's hard for the students on the first day of class to, to be so vulnerable um, with, their fellow, with their fellow students, but I found that when they share these ideas with, and, uh, about themselves with their, with their fellow classmates that they make a stronger commitment to the class because they realize they're not alone. They're not the only person who doesn't read as well as they wanna read. Um, so with that said, what are some of your superpowers? Where was this article from? This article, um, I took it from News For You, from New oh. Readers Press. News For You? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, for, for me then, I think I have superpower being very hardworking but my kryptonite would be computer confidence. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, we have one who says sense of direction Ooh, is their okay. superpower, okay. and sugar is their kryptonite. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Barb is passionate about adult literacy. That's her superpower. Nice, nice, thanks Barb. Anyone else like to share? Hmm. Well, I understand if you don't want to share right now. This is this is hard to share these, you know, very personal information with people that you don't know. I understand, um, but hopefully you've written it down because we we will be using that information later on. Okay, so after my students have identified their superpowers and their kryptonite. Um, I help my students create a vision around their goal. Uh, typically, this goal revolves around um, improving that kryptonite or that low literacy skill. That's typically what my students pick. Like, I can't read well. That's my, that's my kryptonite. Um, and so then the goal revolves around improving that low literacy skill to get their GED or to get their driver's license, just as a few examples. We want our students to have a vision of themselves succeeding and reaching their goal. When our students can see themselves, you know, walking across the stage to get their diploma, this vision can then begin to drive our students' motivation. When people are motivated to do something, they make different choices in their everyday lives. And we can help by telling our students that the person they are now will not be the person who gets their GED. They need to become someone, someone else in order to reach that goal. They need to begin making different choices to become a different person, the person who has a GED, the person who has a driver's license, um, the person who reads every day. You are there to help them bridge that gap between who they are and who they want to become. And that means making different choices and it starts with a different vision of themselves. So let me show you how I do this. First, I ask my students, what's your goal? Okay, and then I ask, how will you feel once you achieve this goal? I think it's very important to attach uh, a feeling or an emotion with the goal. There are better outcomes that way. Then I ask my students to describe their goal in more detail. Okay? I want them to begin designing a picture in their head of this person achieving their goal. I ask the question, what do you want to do with a GED? Okay, Because it's this question that gets those creative juices flowing because for most students, the GED is it's just a stepping stone, okay? The driver's license, it's just a starting place. These goals open the door to opportunities for our students. Finally, I ask, who will this goal serve once you accomplish it? So when students realize that other people are counting on them to achieve this goal, they will create this beautiful picture of what service looks like to them while placing themselves in a position of, of a victor, right? They are now creating their circumstances rather than becoming a victim of their, of their circumstances, which is, which is how they feel at the beginning of class because they can't read well. So I'd like to share a story with you of a student of mine who went through this process. Rebecca? Um, uh, yes. 
Sorry, we have um, just one question. They're asking, can you repeat the three questions one more time? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'll repeat it again, but then we're also, don't worry, I'm gonna share, we'll share some examples and we'll, we'll go through the questions again. So the questions are, and you'll get, also get a copy of this, so don't worry. What's your goal? What's your goal? And then how will you feel once you achieve this goal? And then we want to describe this goal in more detail. So, you know, typically for many of our students, our basic literacy students, it's to get their GED. They might also have that goal of to get their driver's license. So the next question is, what do you want to do with your GED? Because as I said, this is just a stepping stone for so many of our students, but it's important to help them see past that, that GED too, because there's so many more opportunities once they get that. And that's, they know that it's, it's helping them to get to that point where the GED, that's great. We want that, we want that diploma in our hands. What is that going to allow us to do then to really create this beautiful vision? Okay. And then the last question is who will this goal serve once you accomplish it? Who will the goal serve once you accomplish it? Okay, so don't worry, I'll be repeating those again um, here in just a few minutes, but I'd like to share a story with you of a student of mine who went through this process. Um, her name was Diana, which I think is a great name for a superhero. Um, she was a, a true student of mine. She wanted to get her GED. Um, she was from Jamaica, she was a single mom and she saw a better life for herself on the other side of that GED diploma. So I asked her to, to describe her goal in more detail. I said, imagine yourself walking across that stage to get your diploma. What are you wearing? And she said, I'm wearing a cap and gown. And I could see the smile come to her face. And I said, fabulous. Now walk up and receive your diploma. Okay, tell me what's happening. She goes, okay. I, I go and I, I get my diploma and I shake their hand. I'm like, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, turn around. Who do you see in the audience? Who's there cheering you on? And she goes, oh my God, my kids are there. My granddaughter's there. You know, they're screaming loudly for me. I'm like, how are you feeling? She says, well, I'm crying. They're so proud of me. I'm like, this sounds wonderful. Now, what will you do now that you have your GED? And she said, I'm gonna to go to cooking school so that I can open a restaurant. And I said, who will this restaurant serve? And she said, well, the people in my neighborhood, but you know, I really wanna be able to, to open this restaurant with my daughters. Um, we have this dream to open this restaurant and I wanna be able to not have to rely on them so much. I want them to feel confident that I can, I can take care of the books, um, that you know, they can still take care of their families um, while they run this restaurant, while we run it together. And I said, absolutely fabulous. This is what we're looking for here. Diana didn't just want to do this for herself. She wanted to do this for her family. Okay, so we want our students to feel that their choices can have a positive influence on not just their lives, but on the lives of, of, of people around them. So it's important to ask good follow-up questions when we help our students create this vision. Questions like, where will you drive after you get your driver's license? Who will you drive once you get your driver's license? Right? Encourage your students to attach service to their goals because being of service to others creates victors, right? That creates very productive members of society. People feel good when they can be of service to others. So don't worry, I know this is a lot, but I give a worksheet in, um, the, in the curriculum um, that you'll work through with your students. They complete the questions in the worksheet and then you help them create a language experience story based on the answers from this worksheet. Okay, so this is our brainstorming process and then we move in to creating this language experience story. Okay, so I have a volunteer here today. Is Maria here? Hi, Rebecca, yes. Hey, Maria, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I am good, thanks. So. Maria's gonna help me out here. She's gonna be my volunteer to help me create this language experience story. And as I said, that language experience story is a story that of your, in your student's own words. So your student is generating the story. And I do this for a few reasons. Um, one, it gives you 
an idea of what your students reading and writing abilities are on the first day of class, because this is something that you would do on the first day of class with your students. And two, it generates homework for our students um, to read at their own reading level. Okay, so I assign them to read this language experience story every morning as a way to begin their day on the right foot um, with, you know, with their priorities, you know, in the front of their minds here. Um, so Maria, are you ready? Maria is going to help us out creating a language experience story based on her vision and, and her goal. All right, so Maria, I'm going to take you through the brainstorming process first and then we'll write down your story, okay? Perfect. Okay. So do you have your superpower and kryptonite written down? I do, yes. Are you willing to share that with us? Sure. Um, so for my um, superpower, I would say um, my uh, relationship building, um, my way with people, I guess. Um, and for my kryptonite, I would say uh, my... Um, uh, what did I write? I wrote down um, my nerves or my anxiety about meeting new people. <laughs> understood, understood. Okay, now would you like to create a goal around you know your, your, your superpower or your kryptonite or do you have another goal in mind? Well, I, I, I thought originally I was going to say that I'd love to improve my baking skills, but I could see a connection. Um, I would love to become a better sort of like host, um, especially meeting new people, you know, hosting people. Once we're allowed to meet in person again, I would really love to, to be a little bit more social. Excellent. Excellent. So I, I'm hearing a lot. So a, a lot here. So you want to be a better host to just connect with people. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, let's talk, let's break this out a little bit more. Who's going to come over to your house? Um, well, someday, uh, you know, maybe friends from school or um, work colleagues or, um, you know, just, just friends I haven't seen in a really long time. It would be nice to have them over again. And how are you going to feel when they come to your house? probably really excited, but also a little bit nervous. I, again, hosting is like a stressful thing for me. Yeah, yeah I understand. Okay. And then tell me what, what sort of food are you going to feed people? Um, well, I love to cook. Um, and I, I would love to, I, I'd like to do like Italian dishes or pasta dishes. Um, I like making big salads. Um, so yeah, maybe pasta and salad. Excellent. So maybe to help take a little bit of pressure off of you and a little bit of the anxiety, let's start talking about how this is going to serve the people who come to your house. How are they going to feel now that they get to come over to your house and, and kind of join in a party? That's a great question. Um, hopefully in coming over, they'll feel um, entertained and excited to uh, be out and they'll feel um at ease and like they don't have to worry about feeding themselves that night or you know coming up with something to fill the time i'll be taking care of that that bit for them fantastic thank you maria okay so the next thing we do is we're going to type this out um, i'm going to see if i can i can here okay great i'm going to open up my word document here and we'll type it up in the word document i find that that's a little bit easier okay so rebecca we have one question and they're asking yeah. Does each student create a language experience story for themselves on day one? Yes, they do. Yes. With my students, I only work with anywhere from two to five students because we're basic literacy students. It's, it's good to keep these groups small. Um, as I said, the, the skill levels, their needs, it's, you know, it's a, it's a range even within um, the same level that they test in. So I keep them small and we go through this process together as a group first. And then students, because many of them have the same goal of improving their reading skills, um, can fill in the, the worksheet after we go through it together. And then I'll show you what I do with students. Um, if I'm not working with them individually, I have other activities that they'll work on. So we do create a language experience story for each student on the first day um, so that they have something to read then for the week for their homework. Okay, um, Maria, let's go back. We're gonna create this language experience story. I'm gonna type it up for you since I've, I've got my, my screen up here. 
Um, typically, I would ask my student what they would be comfortable with. Do you want to write it or would you like me to write it? Most of the time they ask me to write it. Um, so Maria, I'm going to ask you those questions again and um, I'm going to type it up. If you could do me a favor and just talk a little bit slower because I don't type super fast, <laughs> I would appreciate it. Um, so Maria, what is your goal? Um, to be a better host. Okay, so it's also, if you could speak in, uh, in complete sentences, that would, be, that would be great for this story. I would like to become a better host. Okay, and how, how, how will you feel once you achieve this goal? I'll feel less anxious and relieved okay. when I achieve this goal. And who's coming to your house? Um, school friends, um, co-workers, and maybe family members. And how will these people feel when they come to your house? Hopefully they'll feel um, entertained, taken care of, and at ease. How does that make you feel that you have helped these people or provided a space for your friends and family and coworkers to just you know, feel welcomed and have a space where they can, you know, let their hair down. How does that make you feel? I would feel really relieved myself um, and uh, excited to be able to provide that for them. All right, thank you, Maria. Thank you. So typically, I won't have Maria read this back to us, but with the language experience story, I read this as a tutor, I would read this back to my student. And then I would ask, Maria, is there anything as you look at this that you would wanna add or change to your story? I would, I would maybe, um, let's see. Mm, I would probably get rid of the maybes. Okay. <laughs> I have a maybe before family members and um, I could get rid of the, the, the really before relieved. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. Does that sound good to you there? Okay. I think so. So for those who haven't done language experience stories before, I write down exactly what my student tells me. I don't change anything. I allow them to change or add anything that they want to add after I read it back to them. And so then um, the rest of the process would go that Maria and I would read this together and then I would ask her to read it on her own. Um, then she would copy this down into her notebook. So thank you, Maria. Thank you for helping me out with that. All right, let me pull this up. Can we, just a moment. After we run through our language experience story, then we move into, here we go, a spelling strategy, because this is always something that our students are looking for, right? So we've completed the language experience story process, and then I'll ask my students, is there any word that's unfamiliar to you that you wanna learn how to spell better, okay? I have this process called the look, say, cover, write, check. It's not my process, it's something that I found I think it was on the internet or maybe it was in one of my tutor training books, but it's a, a nice spelling process that my students have found success with. Um, I do have a volunteer today. Is Barb here? Barb. Yes, I am. Hi, Barb. Barb. Barb, has, <laughs> Barb has kindly volunteered to, to walk through this spelling strategy with me. So typically what I would do is I would have my students look at that language experience story again. Is there any word that you want to um, learn how to spell better that's unfamiliar to you. And typically there are, when we work with basic literacy students, they're, they're excellent speakers, right? Um, you know, 
So there's there's usually a word in there that they that they you know have never seen before. They're just not familiar with. So there's usually a word that they'd like to learn how to spell better. So Barb, um, we'll pretend that you wrote your language experience story, and that your word is kryptonite. Okay, you use the word kryptonite in your language experience story. Okay, so Barb, I'm going to ask you to use your annotation tool uh, on mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're going to fill in this chart. Um, you'll just follow me through this process, okay? Okay. Okay, so here's your word. Kryptonite. This word is kryptonite. What is this word? Kryptonite. Please copy this word into the first column right here. Rebecca, when you're done with Barb, can we take a minute for questions? <clears throat> Absolutely. And then Barb, to if you could, there you go, perfect. All right. In the next column, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask how many letters are in this word kryptonite? Ten. Ten. Perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did it come in? No, it's a long word. <laughs> All right. Next, I want to know, is there anything funny or tricky about this word? And you might think about like letter combinations. Maybe there's a silent letter in this word. Um, maybe there's a different vowel in the word than you would have chosen. Mm, I think I was surprised it was a Y okay, so instead of an I in Christian. Great, so if you just write the Y in there in that column. Okay. Okay. And now in the fourth column, it says how to remember. And this means, is there, is there how will you remember this word? Is there another word inside this word? Um, does it rhyme with the word that you might already know how to spell? And, and I don't force anybody to put anything in here if there's nothing that they can see, okay? So, well, I mean, I guess I could say something like the word why, why is there a why? Okay. Why yeah. is there a why? That's great, I like that. So if my students don't put anything in this column, um, we can come back to it later, depending on how they do um, writing the word from memory. Okay, so if you want to, Barb, you can come down to this this row right here and, and you're going to okay. type the word in again. And then what I'd like you to do is use your drawing tool and just roughly shape the outline of this word. Just a rough, rough outline. Put a, a outline around it? Yeah, around the word. We want the word shape. What's this word shape? Oh, hmm. So it's just a rough outline. It's not going to be like perfect. with the tall, with the tall things and the short things. So let me show you. <laughs> so it's just um, exactly. Yep. It's a little better when we do it in person, right? If they do it on a piece of paper. <laughs> okay. Yes. So the reason why. I ask students about word shape is because, you know, decent spellers know what the word looks like, even if they aren't sure of the spelling, right? So, you know, for most of us, we can look at the shape of the word and decide if we should add more letters or move letters around because there are some words that I never remember how to spell. But if I just start writing it out, then I can move letters around in there because I know generally what the word shape should look like. Okay, the next thing I'd like you to do, Barb, is to close your eyes if you feel comfortable, and you're gonna spell the word in your mind's eye. Okay, either in your mind's eye, or you can write it um, you know, in front of you in the air if you'd like, whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay, finished? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now what I'd like you to do is write that word in the next column there, write the word kryptonite again. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now we're gonna cover this up. That's the cover part of it. 
cover part here. And I'm gonna ask you to write the word from memory. Are you ready? Wait, well, how am I gonna do this with the text box in the next Oh, I'm gonna column? open the whiteboard for you. Oh, okay, okay. And then you can just write it right here. Okay. When you're ready, Bart, it right. I don't, can you click out of the text box? Oh, there yeah. you go. Perfect. <laughs> All right. And then we would go back and check. Um, I think I, unfortunately, it gets lost when you do this on the screen, but that's okay because it looks right to me, Barb. It looks great. So we would come back to our, 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 our um, chart here and we would check. If, if the student spells the word wrong, and, and sometimes it happens, it's totally fine. What we do is we go back through the process again, right? We go back, was there maybe something tricky about the word that you weren't expecting when you spelled it from memory? Okay, maybe we, we just update that column there. Okay, maybe there's a different way we can remember how to spell it. Okay, so you'll get a copy of this chart along with the description of each of the columns, just in case you forget what's being asked. The descriptions are, are um, come with the, with the lesson, so don't worry. Um, I do hope that you try this with your students. I, I know that I've had great success with, with this, um, this spelling strategy with my students. So thanks so much, Barb, for playing along. Okay, so we had two questions. Go ahead. Uh, the first question was still regarding the experience story. And mm -hmm. um, they wanted to know, what are other students doing when you are working with Maria on her experience story while you're in the group? So you're in the group together all doing this or? Yeah, they, they have a worksheet that they're working on on their, on their own, that, they've, that they're filling in on their own. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to show you at the end, there are some what I call on your own activities that I've that I set students up with either on the computer. Um, it might be to just, you know, read through a, a book that they might have found on the shelf uh, as they wait for me um, to come around to them. And as I said, I don't take any more than, than five students in a class. Um, typically, it does take a lot of my students a long time to work through that worksheet on their own um, as I as I go around to work with other students. Okay, we have two more questions. questions? Um, the words that you choose for spelling, are these words from their own stories or from uh, classmates' stories? It's from their own story. These are words from their own stories and I ask them to look at their stories and tell me what they wanna learn how to spell better. Are there any words? Sometimes I make suggestions after hearing them read it. Um, you know, maybe it's this word that you'd like to learn how to spell better because the students are reading the story back to you during that language experience story process. Okay, and then the final question is, are you using these tools for virtual instruction? The students need to be taught how to use all of the extra functions on Zoom, whiteboard, etc. Or are these really for in person strategies? So I know you could use these for online instruction. I haven't done it yet because we haven't had any beginner or excuse me, basic literacy students come in until this month. So we are starting the class next week, but I know that you could use these as I showed with Barb, as I showed with Maria, that you can use these. Yes, you will have to teach your students how to use the functions. We've been doing that, I think, since we started on Zoom and, and virtual instruction that you know, it's important to show them how these digital resources work. Any other questions? Great ones. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So then we've created our language experience story. We've helped our students with the spelling strategy. This was in the first class that we've had with our students. The next class, all right, we're going to create a vision board with our students. Has anyone created a vision board before? create simple vision boards with our, with our basic literacy students. And if you're unfamiliar with what a vision board is, it is a visual representation of your goals and your dreams. Um, it uses images and, and words to depict your vision, okay? If you've done one before, they might've been pretty elaborate and you've used maybe pictures from magazines um, that you've cut out and you've placed on some cardstock or a, excuse me, a piece of paper, whatever you've used. 
you make a kind of a beautiful collage with your vision there. Um, it should be something pleasing to you to look at, um, to remind you every day of what your goals are. Um, so we use vision boards for our students as a reminder um, of why they're coming to class. Okay. This is my student Benny right here. He created this vision board over here and we use Google Docs to create vision board as a way to um, integrate more digital literacy into um, the lessons. So we use Google Doc and he created this simple vision board over here. Um, he used keywords from his language experience story uh, to search for images on the internet. Okay, so one of the biggest kind of issues that I found with students is that internet searches can be challenging for them. Um, they don't know what words to use. They don't know how to refine their search. So we use words that they've already used in their language experience story, and they just underline those words and they take those words and those now become their keywords to place into Google to find their images that they're looking for. So here are some of the, um, you know, as you look at Benny's vision board here. Um, what I like about this is that Benny on his phone, he had um, a picture of a logo that he is going, he was he's using for his cleaning services. He hadn't started the business yet. He was just in the process of starting it, um, but he had a logo that he wanted to place on the vision board here. And what's so great about this is that about a year later, Benny came into my office and he had started his business. He was doing really great. He brought me a shirt. Um, so to see the vision become a reality um, was, was um, just a, a, really, a really great circle there for Benny. So as I said, you know, Benny did this vision board on a computer um, to integrate some, some digital skills directly into the activity. And this then yielded like a, a physical printout that I printed for him. He took it home, he posted it on his door to remind himself of why he's attending class every week. I think that's important for our students because we might be only seeing them once a week, that they need to have that visual of why they're coming to class. They wanna be an entrepreneur, they wanna travel, they wanna start their own businesses, they want that financial freedom. Okay, so we're gonna do a collaborative vision board today. <clears throat> and to do this, if you followed along with us and you created a language experience story while I did it with Maria, you'll be able to underline words that represent your goal. So maybe if you didn't do the language experience story, maybe it's your, your superpower, okay? That's gonna be um, your Google search term, okay? You'll use that search term that superpower. And you'll do a Google image search to find pictures that resonate with you, pictures that feel good to you to look at, okay? And then finally, you'll copy and paste those pictures into a Google Doc, all right? Before I place the link to this um, vision board, because we'll do a collaborative vision board, before I place that link into the chat box, I wanna demonstrate how to do a Google image search. So for those of you who aren't familiar with image searches, let me just give you a, some quick directions here. So you have your keyword, which is your superpower. And you're gonna type that into the, the text box in Google, okay? Initially, if you type it into the text box and there's, you don't have these options on the bottom, it's just gonna give you an all search, which will generate websites, okay? But you don't want websites, you want images. So if that's what you get, first, then you wanna just come up here and click images. Okay, and those will generate some images here for you, just like this, this is just an example. So this is my, um, my keyword search. Here's my images. I'll find an image that I like. I'm gonna right click. It's not gonna do it for me here. You wanna right click, and then when you right click, you'll have the option to copy. And then you'll go into the Google Doc. And when you're in the Google Doc, you're gonna right click again and you'll paste, okay? Give me a minute, I will copy this into the chat box for you. Any questions on that as I copy this link and place it in the chat box? There is one question about, okay, so um, 
you feel that you you recommend that a lot of time needs to be invested upfront in students being able to set up their mindset to be successful with this class? Can, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Um, you recommend, do you recommend that time, a lot of time be invested upfront in students setting up the mindset? I think as you go through the process of that language experience story, it begins to show your students that they can see themselves in a different way. And I think this process, it's a slow process, right? I, it's this process where I take you through the first class where you're creating an image, a, a different vision of your life. And then the second class is and in, in, in that you're creating the language experience story. And then the second class is now you're finding images that represent your vision for your life now. It's, it's, I think it's a slower, it's a slow process. You can't ask people to change their mindset, you know, super quickly. We are investing a lot of time in that um, because it's, it's necessary for our students who for most of their lives have been working in this mindset of, I can't read, I can't read, I can't read, I can't do it they can do it. And the way we show them that they can do it is because they've been able to do all these other things over here. We're just going to transfer those skills and that mindset and bring it over here and, and apply it to their reading skills. Great question. Thank you. Um, I'm going to click on the link. And for those of you who might be joining us from um, the tablet, Um, you can just follow me along here. Okay, let me see if I can find that. All right. Looks like we have some people already starting to add to our vision board here. Excellent. Rebecca, does it matter if you're using Zoom or or Google for your lesson? You could still use this Google Doc vision board. Oh, so I'm using we're using Zoom now. And so definitely you could use Zoom with all the Google products here. Okay. I, I know I've I have i have never I've used Google Meet once and um I had some issues with it, but I, I have a teacher who loves Google Me and because it integrates so well with all the Google products like Docs and Jamboards and Slides. So yeah. Let's see here. We lost one of our pictures. Let's see if we can go back. There. Oh, fantastic. I like that. Some wonderful pictures that are coming up there. So we're all using the same Google Doc, like yeah. your student and you can both add to the same Google Doc? So for my students, I, I this is just for the workshop, we're just doing a collaborative vision board. Okay. Uh, just so you can see other people add in. I just think that's fun to see what everybody's goals are. For my students, they would work on their own, on their own document. Um, I would have access to it because I would give them the link. Okay. Um, they, you know, you know, it's their choice if they want to share that with their classmates. Okay, so you'll just email them the link and then they can open it for class. Typically, I I could email it to them, um, or if we wanted to do it in class, I might just add the link to the chat box. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Sure. I wanted to do this on Jamboard, just for those of you who, who are wondering why we don't do it on Jamboard, it would seem like a great idea. Um, but one of the issues with Jamboard is that you can't just copy and paste a picture into Jamboard. Um, there's a there's a there's a workaround for that, but it's not as simple as just copying and pasting in here. 
I like that car there. All right. Oh, travel again, right? It's been so long. I can't wait to pull out my hammock again to read. I just waiting for the rain to stop. But it's springtime. Okay. Give you just a few more, about 30 more seconds, and then we'll come back into. Um, hi, uh, Rebecca. Yes. Um, I, I, I have a question, and I think it's, it's great that we, we give people the opportunity to develop their goals and develop these vision boards. Um, but do we feel any kind of uh, responsibility to provide some kind of practical approach to what they're envisioning? Um, within what they're saying that the that the goals are? I think that's what we do every day when our students come into class. That's the practical approach. We, we want to know, these are long-term goals for our students, right? Um, so it's going to take a while, especially if they're, be, they're basic literacy students. So it, every time they come to class, you know, every, every day of the week, they will need to be working towards this goal. And in the curriculum, I show you how to do that. There are habits that we're helping our students to build. It's a reading habit. Um, it is, you know, finding somebody to hold you accountable. Um, it is making sure that your priorities are in the right place. Um, so that every, every day you are working towards this goal. Does that make sense, Tom? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, um, um, I, I think I think we we we've always got to good, got to keep that in in, in mind that um, uh, we're looking for them to develop and and uh, be be successful. Um, you know, we 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 don't want to pour cold cold water on their on their ideas, but I'm I'm, just, I'm sure we want to we want to provide some level of um, you know, practicality. I see what you're saying. What we do, though, is that many of my students, when, when, when I walk them through this idea of what it is that they want to do after they get their GED, it's not, it's not crazy. I don't think it's, you know, it, it's certainly something that they are capable of doing. And, and I think that as tutors, we should be hopeful for our students, that we should hold this vision for them, um, we know it's going to take a long time, right? And I, I think our students know, you know, maybe not um, consciously, but they do know subconsciously, this is going to take a while to get to this, to, to this place where they can get their GED. But we could be there to hold that vision for them when things get tough, right? So it's about, you know, ensuring that our students are coming to class every week, um, even if they don't hit this goal while they're in our class, they are learning skills um, and that eventually one day that they will make this goal. No, I, I think this is a very good approach in terms of, of in generating a motivation and maintaining that, that motivation through the, uh, <clears throat> through the on, on, ongoing classes. I've, I have no problem with, with the approach that you're taking. Thank you. Oh, sure. Okay, so we're gonna head back into our slides here. Um, I wanted to share with you what this would look like when, when you put it all together. Um, I usually record my students um, when they give me their language experience story because they asked me to write it down for them. Um, I can't write as fast as, as they talk. So I, I ask if I can record it. And um, so then I get some, some really beautiful stories from my students. And this is one of them. And this is Billy's story. Um, you can see his vision board here on the right and um, some of his goals that he has for himself and for his family. So it'll give you an idea as you listen to his story 
um, and I'm going to share with you now. Okay, I just need to do a quick new share and share my sound with you. I feel nervous. Uh, I feel nervous and I feel good at the same time. I feel like I'm taking the first steps. And at the same time, I feel I feel nervous. I feel like um, I'm nervous, I guess. And my goals are to get my GED, not just to get my GED, but to learn how to read, how to write. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of things come with that. Um, I'll be able to start my own business. I'll be able to fill out work orders, I'll be able to go to a restaurant and don't feel weird, I'll be able to pick up a menu and order, it, it, it'll be a lot of things that I'll be able to do, take my kids out and, you know, be able to read directions without their help, you know, it's a lot of things I'll, I'll be able to do with just my GD. My GD is just a platform, it's just something to get me started, once it gets me started, there's other things I want to put on my plate, I like reading the Bible, I like to learn about Jesus, I like to learn... I might want to take a trip to Jerusalem and learn, you know, more about him, learn how to read, you know, some other language or something. It's a lot. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll feel good. I think, uh, you know, I'll feel better about myself. I won't, I won't be depressed. I think she's going through depression because not being able to use a computer makes you depressed. I mean, not being able to defend yourself as a person with all this technology, you're not able to, to, to do you. you I think I'm capable of a lot of things. I just didn't have the opportunity to be taught. So I think once I'm taught these things, I'm able to really flourish and show my, show not just others, but myself what I can really do. Amen. Read to my kids. Why do you want to read to your kids? I'm always on them about school. Do good in school. Did you do your homework? So I want them to understand. You know, I want to be able to, um, you know, go to the library, pick a book. Tell them about history. I, love, I enjoy a lot of history. So I want to show them a lot of things that I'm not able to do now. So by reading, I think we can could, we could bond more. We can, uh, we can do a whole lot of things that and learn a whole lot together. Okay, that's Billy's story. Shows you, I think, what students are capable of, of producing during this, um, this language experience story and then creating a vision around that. What questions can I answer um, about anything that we've talked about so far? Okay. So for all of these activities that I have highlighted today, I have created worksheets for you um, to complete with your students. They are, they are in the curriculum that you'll get. Um, as somebody has asked, have I done this online? We're going to start doing this online next week. So one of the things that I've started doing is to create these hyperdocs um, to work on some collaborative work online and as well as to give my students a way of completing work online and to build those digital skills. Um, if you're not familiar with what a hyperdoc is, it's, it's a digital lesson that you know, it gets students creating and communicating and using their critical thinking skills. So I have some examples that I'll, I'll share with you here. Um, I think I saw some questions come in. Lauren, were there any questions? Yes, there are a few. Um, the first one is, any ideas for a student who is basic literacy, but also uh, limited English? Mm, I think I would start on the English first. I would definitely start with the communicating, um, the speaking part, the listening and speaking part first, and then move on to um, building up the reading and writing skills. I think it's about just doing a lot of repeating for your, for your English language learner first, um, and then a lot of labeling of things for them to help build the, um, the, those reading skills. Um, the second question, and um, Susan, if I'm not asking this correctly, please feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, do you do dictation or do you record? Um, I've done both. And it like, as you heard Billy, he, he, he can talk pretty fast. So I recorded Billy, but I do have students who do talk slower. So I do just dictate, you know, whatever they say down. 
So it's your choice and it's also what your students feel comfortable with. Not all students are comfortable being recorded. Um, and then the last question is, uh, Billy spoke very well. What was his writing skill level? Um, he refused to write it. Um, he, um, I think he scored at a level two, ABE level two, which is around the second to fourth grade reading level. Um, what was so wonderful about Billy is that he had a great memory. I think that basic literacy students have this, that's one of their superpowers is their memory. And um, he was a supervisor for a landscaping company. And he got to that position because his wife would read the book to him and he would be able to memorize the material. And then she was able to like proctor the test for him so that and he would choose the right answer. It was, it was pretty incredible what Billy was capable of doing. Um, he just wanted to go to the restaurant, as you heard, and just order the menu, you know, order from the menu by himself. He just, his reading level was, was pretty low. Um, so as I was talking about, these are the hyperdocs. I'm gonna share what they look like with you. There are, you're gonna get this, um, let me make sure that this is sharing here, perfect. Um, you're gonna get the link to this and it's gonna force you to make a copy of it because um, then you'll have your own copy of this rather than changing my copy here. So this is making a copy. Um, it's the superpowers thing, it's the superpower activity that we did at the beginning. Um, it's just simplified a little bit more. Um, you're welcome to you know, change things around, whatever works for your students here. But this is something that um, I'm going to be working through with my students as we, you know, take a look at pictures. They're going to have their own copy. They can type in their answer. We're going to be building on digital skills here, some reading and writing skills as well. What I love about these hyperdocs is that you can add, you can add video, you can add articles in here, um, you can even add recordings of yourself um, in here. So this is the a hyperdoc for that. Uh, Stan Lee activity that we did at the beginning. And then I'll, I'll give you access to these in just a minute. Here is the making a vision board. And this is a different type of hyperdoc. Um, it's just a different format. There are many different ways that you can create these. Um, if you do a, just a quick hyperdoc search, um, there is a, a site, I think it's just called hyperdocs.com, something like that. This is where I got these from um, that have um, what it was called, just, you know, hyperdocs that you can edit, which is nice. So that's what I did with these. So this is one about, you know, creating a vision. So we put some quotes in here and then my students can go through and they can watch a few videos um, to understand what visualization is and to, how to create a vision board. Um, most of my basic literacy students love to watch videos. That's one of the ways that they learn. So we try to take advantage of the best way that they learn. And then we go, the explaining part is something that you'll go through with them together. It's not something that I would have my students do on their own. And then we would apply this. Okay, so now we're going to create a vision board. So I give them a little bit of directions. Um, that, uh, again, we would go through together and then they have this to refer to if they need it with some pictures here. And then they would share their vision board if they felt comfortable with that um, and reflect on where they're gonna post this at home. So I'm gonna, Stop sharing here for a minute and then I'll give you access to this. If you'd like to take a look at it. I call it a choose your own adventure. So it's your choice um, what you'd like to take a look at. The first one is the goal setting workshop, the goal setting activity. That is um, the first one there. And then the next one will be the vision board activity. Okay, so I'll give you a, a, about a minute or two to look through those.
wakes people up, doesn't it, that sound? All righty, so if you'd all like to come back into the Zoom meeting, hopefully you haven't lost us. If you've lost us, sometimes it happens, I understand. You'll just go down to your bottom menu there, find the Zoom icon, which is the blue, the blue square with the uh, white video camera in it. And you'll see us there waving. Okay, so hopefully we're all back. Alrighty. So let me explain just a little bit more about how this curriculum works. Within each lesson, which you'll have access to at the end here, um, each lesson in the curriculum includes objectives, a conferencing component like we did at the beginning, for example, um, what did you read this week? Um, all lessons include reading, writing, and technology activities. And those, as I said, those digital literacy skills are woven into those reading and writing lessons. Um, there are handouts to go with each lesson, as well as those on your own activities that I was talking about before. And then homework is assigned every week. What I typically do with the homework is I start to build their reading stamina here. So we start out with, you know, three minutes a week every day three minutes every day and then we, you know, each week increase that reading because most of my students when they come in have been reading nothing. Um, so I don't want to overwhelm them with reading. We start with a little bit. It's that language experience story. And then each week we just keep building that reading stamina from there. Some of the on your own activities include, you know, bringing a book in to read or just bringing something in to read, working on the computer. And I'll show you that in just right now. So. I want my students to be able to access resources that are free and available to them. A lot of these resources um, you can find through the library because you know, almost everybody has access to the library. If you live in New Jersey, you can get a library card and you have access to um, the Learning Express Library and the Overdriver Libby app as well. And getting a library card is actually one of the lessons in the, um, in the curriculum because I think that's so important for people um, to know that, you know, your taxes go to pay for this and you should take advantage of it. There's so many wonderful things at the library. I absolutely love it. Um, this first one that I want to talk about, these are things that you should all be familiar with if you're going to teach this, this curriculum. This is gcflearnfree.org. It's a free um, website that has lots of digital, um, digital skills, activities, and courses on there. Um, it also you know, they also have life skills on here, which I think are great. And students can, you know, go through these on their own. They don't necessarily have to have a teacher there. Once they learn how to, you know, navigate the site, which there are lessons in here on how to navigate the site, um, then they can just go on and do it as an on your own activity if you're working with another student. Of course, um, you should understand your local library's webpage and your students should be able to understand that, where to find those resources, such as where to, um, find books, how to place books on hold, um, how to access the library's calendar of events, that calendar of events. And then this is one of my favorites. I don't know if anybody's heard of this one, but the Learning Express Library, I absolutely think this is a wonderful site. And I, I believe it is still free through the State Library of New Jersey. They give all the uh, libraries in New Jersey access to this. So if you have a library card, you have access to this Learning Express library for free. Now, finding it on your library's webpage is another story. Um, each library labels it differently. It might be labeled Learning Express library. I know a library that we work close with in Burlington County um, labels it as testing resources because there's a lot of testing resources on here, GED, ASVAB, um, um, driver's test, the citizenship test is on here too, but they also have courses on here as well that students can work through on their own once they learn how to navigate this site. The other part about this site is that there is a job and career accelerator search on here, which is wonderful. It pulls in, um, it pulls in jobs from Indeed, from the US.gov US, US, US. Mm -hmm. jobs, from all over. You would typically have to buy that, buy a membership to that, but if you have the Learning Express Library with your library card, you get access to that for free. So this is a wonderful site, the Learning Express Library. And then of course, I want my students to be able to access books at any time. So we talk about how to download the OverDrive or the Libby app, whichever is most comfortable for them. So if you have not downloaded these apps, there is 
um, you know, directions in there on how to download it so that you can show your students how to do that too. Okay, so Lauren, were there any questions? Um, no, just a suggestion um, that Canopy is a streaming service also available for free through most New Jersey libraries. And another mention that Libby is much easier than Overdrive. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I definitely agree. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to throw it back to Lauren now. Um, let her finish up. And then I'll, um, while she's doing that, I'm going to put the, um, the link to the curriculum in the, uh, in the chat box there. Um, okay, everybody. So what we were hoping you'd be able to do for us um, now that we're gearing towards the end of the workshop is to take a moment and to please um, fill out the conference uh, evaluation form. I've just linked it in the chat. If you could just take a few minutes to, to do that for us, we would really appreciate it. Um, and then before, um, just yeah, like like I said, before you go, if you could fill it out, and then uh, once you're done with that, Rebecca's going to be able to post um, the link to the curriculum for you all in the chat. Okay. All right, so I'm going to place the curriculum. It's in a Google Drive. Um, it's in PDF format. So you can click on it there. The curriculum is there and the handouts are in there too. Um, and then I'm also going to in my email address. So if you start working on it and you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. That's in uh, that's in the chat box too. There. And then while you're typing that down, if anybody has any questions, you can feel free to unmute yourself or type them in the chat box. So once you've taken the link there with the Google Doc, um, the curriculum in it, uh, if you don't have any questions, thank you all for coming. I'll be here the next few minutes. Anybody wants to stick around if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming and thank you to Rebecca for presenting. We hope everybody enjoyed their evening. Thanks Rebecca, awesome. Thanks Barb. You're a star. <laughs> Can I 
I share, can I then, how do I share my, your information to, to send it to me on my computer? I know that's a stupid question, my computer illiteracy. Okay. Um, so I can save it. Uh, did you, are you, what are you trying to send to yourself? No, just like your last, you know, the information, you know, your. The email address? The, no, just like the, the handout, you know, like you said, the passed out. If you could copy and paste it and send yourself oh. an email. Okay, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. can, can you just put a bookmark to that, um, that drive and will that stuff continue to be there or do you, I need to grab it now? So it'll be there through the conference. So okay. you'll have it through at least Sunday, yeah. <clears throat> so, to access the material afterward, um, I'm going to place the links on Whova. So if you, um, you know, if you close everything out and you haven't saved the links, no worries. You'll have access, to, <clears throat> excuse me, to it on Whova. Um, I'll put it. <clears throat> excuse me. I think I'm, I'll just put it in the chat within this workshop. I should be able to find it there. Um, <clears throat> you can always reach out to me too. I'll, I'll again, I'll just put my information. <clears throat> chat box you can always reach out to me and i can send it to you i can send you the links as well so after the fact if you want to access the material you can in google drive there's the option to copy the material you can do that you can download it and that'll help save to your computer um, those would be the two options that I would use, either copy the material or download it, and then you can place it wherever you can find it to use later. You can also, as somebody said, bookmark it. Um, these resources will be available through the weekend. Um, but if you want them, you know, for later on, you can download the material or copy it. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. <clears throat> Thank you. It was a great presentation. Thank you, Diane. I'm going to stop recording. Okay, Rebecca. Perfect.